they say don't do it. But, but I can't control myself. I gotta do it. My fault, brother. I'm going in. Y'all don't really want it with Ali's men. You say you Moors, but you don't know where Ali's been. You ain't Ali's friend, so take that fez off. I swing the scimitar and I take heads off. Leave that. Okay, we're back to debunking Tashrik Bay. Now, tonight we're going to talk about Bay v. Stumpf. This is a 2011 New Jersey case, and it's a very important case. And it's a case that Tosh Street Bay does not want you to know about. And I'm going to tell you why he doesn't want you to know about it. Taj does not want you to know about this case, because this is a case in which these guys were using documents and templates from Taj's website, Lost, and the court got into discussion of why the documents were bullshit. In the section titled, Plaintiffs Utilize the Hoax Moorish Marrakesh Online Form, it identifies the source of the template forms that these guys used in the court as rvbaypublications.com. For those who do not know, rvbay publications is Todd's website where he sells some stuff and some stuff he gives away for free. Now then, if we go to the link that is cited in this 2011 uh, rvbaypublications.com, forward slash id92.html, we see that the writs of fr freedom, which these guys used, are still available on Todd's website, even though these writs do not have any legal effect. Quote, the seemingly hoax boilerplate is also among many boilerplate forms offered by the website rvbaypublication.com. All these boilerplate forms are ready to fill in the sense that the reader needs to type in only a few words of personal information into pages and pages of text, and B, appear to be nothing but hoaxes since the contents of these forms lack any legal rationale, as well as products having titles that somewhat resemble actual legal documents by having the content that makes no sense legally. Now then, let's go back to Todd's website. Uh, yesterday, I got a comment from the bemused one asking, do these folks make money touting this bullshit? The answer is, you bet they do. Over on the store section of Todd's website, we can see that they sell nationality identification cards, right to travel cards, and student ID cards. Each of these cards costs $50 each, or you can buy all three for only $130. In addition to that, they also sell books teaching you how to dodge taxes and how to drive without a license. Now, let me just explain why this is so important. At the end of the day, the judge is basically a referee. They decide what's allowed and what's not allowed on the court. Now, let's pretend uh, you're LeBron James and you decide, you know what, I don't want to dribble the ball anymore when I run around. I'm just going to run around without dribbling the ball. That is never going to work because the referees are never going to allow that. The same principle applies to these Moorish arguments and Todd Sharik's paperwork. The judges have already ruled that none of that is going to be allowed in court. None of that is going to be successful in court. So it doesn't matter what you think about the specific paperwork. Maybe you agree with what Todd says. Maybe you agree with what the paperwork says. But it's never going to work. Now then, one of the comments that I got on the first video argued, and I'm parapha paraphrasing here, that because the Moorish movement started in 1914 and the Sovereign Citizen movement started in the 60s and 70s, uh, logically the Sovereign Citizen must have been copying from the Moorish movement and not the Moorish movement from the Sovereign Citizen movement. Now, while it is true that the Moorish Science Temple was established in 1914, Moors did not begin using sovereign citizen arguments in court until 1982 in the case of Habersham Bay v. Commissioner of Internal Revenue. In this case, this guy argued that because he was a Moor, he did not have to pay income taxes. Now, the problem is that the white sovereign citizens have been trying this at least 10 or 20 years before then. If we go to United States v. Scott, 1975, we can see an example of a guy that was trying the whole, I don't have to pay taxes, I'm a sovereign citizen in 1969. And if you want more examples of this, just look up uh, Gordon Call, who was one of the guys that started this stuff in the late 1960s. Now, this is important for two reasons. Number one, it shows where Taj comes from. Taj is either one of these guys who was involved in the 1980s in copying sovereign citizen tactics and mixing them up with Moorish beliefs, or Taj learned from somebody who was doing that in the 80s. 
more importantly, and for the purposes of this video, the fact that between 1982 and 2016, where we are right now, these arguments have never once worked in court. They have failed every single time. Yet Taj is out there on the internet, in lectures, on his website, selling products, selling do documents, and giving them away for free in some exact cases, knowing that these, case this ar these arguments have never worked in court and will never work in court. And yet there are people on YouTube promoting these arguments, trying these arguments out in the real world. There are people and women like Corin Gaines trying this stuff in the real world, ending up losing their cards, losing court, ending up in jail, and getting shot as happened to Corin Gaines. Anyways, back to the Bay v. Stumpf case. Another really good thing about the Bay v. Stumpf case is that it debunks the uh, Treaty of Morocco argument that Todd and the Moors constantly bring up. Quote, This unique issue spurs from a single feature present virtually in every submission made in this type of case. The feature is that these litigants nearly invariably always invoke the Barbary Treaties and specifically the Treaty of Morocco in the context of challenging their searches, arrests, confinements, criminal proceedings, bail fees, etc. that took place entirely within the United States territory and were effectuated by law enforcement and judicial officers of the state of New Jersey, Delaware, Virginia, Florida, etc. Quote, all provisions of the Treaty of Morocco are, however, wholly inapposite to these type of challenges. It's noted, the Treaty of Morocco was executed, as with all Barber treaties, with an aim to eliminate or at least curtail the ill of piracy plaguing the coastal waters and, post and ports of the post-medieval North African geopolitical bodies, and b. eliminate at least or at least halt the rise of the fees charged by the rulers of these geopolitical bodies, to the then developing American merchantry for keeping the peace in the ports and coastal waters, subject to their dominion. See Frank Lambert, the, the Barbary Wars, American Independence in the Amer Atlantic World. <clears throat> it is therefore hardly surprising that the bulk of these provisions of these Barbary treaties are focused on issues of maritime time slash admiralty, war, merchant purchases, sales, and akin matters, and B were set forth in terms of protections of vessels. Quote, this is particularly obvious when in the Treaty of Morocco, which was a short accord consisting of 25 articles with only three articles focusing on acts of war, vessels, merchant activities, etc., but on the acts against generic civilian human beings. None of these three articles could be read as applying to habeas or civil rights claims raised by the litigants against police, uh, against state police or prosecutorial officers or judges as to claims based on the events of their arrest, incarceration, bailing, prosecutions, convictions. Indeed, Article 6 of the treaty was fashioned to prevent undue enslaving of American citizens and also to prevent theft of American citizens' goods and the Mediterranean by pirating Moors who were either of Moroccan or non-Moroccan domicile and who were taking undue advantage of the passageways, trade, accommodations, etc. in Moroccan coastal waters and ports. This article is fa fashionably inapplicable to the events which did not occur anywhere near the coastal waters and ports of the Kingdom of Morocco, and to top it all off, were not conducted by Moors. See uh, the list of book. <clears throat> Under the treaty with Morocco, the locus of the treaty partner's interaction was confined to the Mediterranean, and therefore not within the geographical jurisdiction of the United States. And it cites its case uh, in which a self-proclaimed Moorish American Moorish minister was found to not have diplomatic immunity from criminal proceedings conducted in the United States territory. And now we get to the good part. Quote, it is well recognized that such organizations such as the Moorish American nation and similarly imaginary creations like the nation of Washita are notorious organizations of scoffs laws and never do wells who attempt to benefit from the protections of federal and state laws while simultaneously proclaiming their independence from and total lack of responsibility under those same laws. See Sanders B. Bay, finding that the Washita nation is not recognized by the United States government. By B. v. City of Paducah, finding that the nation of Washita is fictional. United States v. Gunwall, rejecting claims that the court had no jurisdiction or a member of the Washita as frivolous. Bay v. Louisiana, 
finding that the plaintiff's claim to land as a member of the Washington was patently frivolous and rested of documents rested on documents of dubious legal significance. Great National Great Seal National Association of Morris Affairs, uh, 2007, dismissing claim that plaintiffs owned several parcels of property by virtue of their Moorish ancestry as baseless, fantastic, and delusional, and finding the complaint to be indecipherable. Finally, Katab L.V. Justice Department holding that the United States has not recognized the sovereignty of the Moorish nation, thus precluding sovereign immunity claims. And finally, L. Bay v. United States 2009, holding any claims or arguments raised by plaintiff which are based on his membership in the Moorish American nation are by definition frivolous. So in summary, trying any of these arguments, going into court and claiming that you're a Moor is a complete waste of time. If you're paying Taj any money for these, this paperwork or anything, you're wasting your money. It is not going to work. You're going to laugh at in court and you're going to lose and probably end up in jail.